Hello, this is a short podcast on how to use the student interface of the Biology Workbench. Uh, what you see on the screen here, this is the uh, online screen. If you haven't registered, you do need to click on registration and fill in that form. I already have a username and a password, so I'm going to go ahead and submit, and that'll get me into the tool. So where you are right now is you are in, what you see at the top are four different tool uh, toolkits. Uh, I'm in the preferences one right now. Notice there's also a protein tools, a nucleic tools if you're working with uh, uh, base pairs such as A, C, T, and G, and an alignment tools. It by, um, by default uh, puts it into what's called a default session. I'm going to do a study on a protein called UCP1. So what I want to do is I'm going to click on new and when it gets to the window I'm going to call this UCP1 study and I'm going to put in here March 2013 because that's when I'm doing this particular study and I'm going to start the new session. and we're waiting for it to register. Okay, now I am in that session and because I want to study a protein, in this case UCP1, I'm going to come up here and click on Protein Tools. What you're going to see now on the right hand side are a series of tools that are used in bioinformatics such as Engine, I have a tool called Blast and SciBlast, I have a tool called FASTA, I have a tool called Clustal, uh, ASTAT, C-Tree, uh, PFS scan, uh, RPS blast, Pele, and then I have some basically some data um, or some file um, options here. I can view uh, a sequence that I download. I can look at records, a variety of things. I can delete things if I want. So what I want to do is I'm looking for a protein called UCP1 and I want to search for uh, for that particular protein. Notice that I have a variety of databases uh, that I can use to, to search for this protein. Uh, the one, the big one up top is GenBank and you see that there are different versions of GenBank for bacteria, for invertebrates, for mammals, so on and so forth. If I scroll down here I get to another set of, of databases called KEG. This is the Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genomics. I get to OMIM, O-M-I-M, that's the Online Mendelian Inheritance in Man database, that's up at NIH. Uh, there's PDB Finder, there's PFAM uh, databases, there's the PIR, which is often a good uh, starter uh, database to use for proteins. Uh, there's a couple of ProSite ones. The one that I like to use the most for beginning protein studies is called SwissProd. And again, like GenBank, notice that it has a variety of, of versions of that. So I'm going to go up here and I want to look for humans. Uh, I also want to find rodents, so I'm going to hold the shift key down to select that. And I also want any other mammals that are non-human and non-rodent. So I'm going to select those three databases and I'm going to hit the engine tool, which is basically the search tool multiple database for protein sequences. This will take a few minutes. Okay, and it looks like I got 20 hits here. So uh, what you see here is UCP1 uh, is the mitochondrial brown fat uncoupling protein. And the first hit I got here is the UCP1 protein for the rat. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that because I do want that one. Now I have one for the mouse, I want that one. I don't want the lemming. I do want the one for uh, Homo sapiens. And when you're, when you're importing these sequences, you want to be careful that you have the same prefix there, UCP1, uh, for the ones you're selecting. Don't just look at the, the organism. Make sure if you're going to try to compare these, you have all of these say UCP1. Okay. So um, you can pick which ones you want. Now notice here it says mouse, but this isn't the same protein. It's a different protein, so be careful there. Um, I want the rabbit. Um, I want a dog. I want a cow. Scrolling on down. Make sure I'm only looking, and that looks like that's the end of my UCP1 uh, proteins. You don't have to select all of these, but I went ahead and selected all the UCP1s 
uh, for some common organisms, including humans. What I want to do now is I want to import these sequences. And again, this will take a few minutes. We're still waiting here for it to import these sequences to my workbench. Usually it doesn't take this long. It must be a busy day up in Illinois. There we go. Okay. And I can either click here to go to sequences that have been imported or I can simply scroll down. And what you see here are the, the, the six uh, sequences that I uh, downloaded. Anytime you work with one or more of these sequences, you have to click on the checkbox there. And one of the first things that I typically do is I go and I hit the view button. Okay? I want to see what this particular protein looks like. And the server is really slow this morning. There we go. And what we've learned from this view is that there are 307 amino acids in this particular protein. Here's the protein, the, what they call the primary sequence, starting with methionine and going from there. These are the one-letter amino acid codes. Okay, So I've learned that this particular protein has 307 amino acids. Uh, when you want to go back to the previous menu, you don't hit the back button. You do hit the return button. That way you won't lose your session if you hit the back button. It's possible you could uh, get kicked out of Biology Workbench. So make sure you use the return buttons here. And again, we're waiting for this server. A little busy this morning. Either the server is busy or the network is slow here at school or both. There we go. So again, I can go back down to uh, this, the sequences that I've imported. One of the things that I might want to do, and this is a typical thing to do, is I can click on two organisms and I can compare these two proteins to each other by doing what's called clustal. And what clustal does is it aligns the, these protein sequences with each other. So let me hit the clustal tool there. This is a very typical thing that I would do with when I'm looking at protein sequences from different organisms. And again, we're waiting for Illinois to talk to us. This is uh, this uh, database or all this resource is housed at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications or NCSA, and they are located at the University of Illinois Urbana Champaign out in Illinois. Okay, there we go. So if I scroll down here, so what I did is I aligned human and mice. And what I'm seeing here is I've aligned the two sequences. Anything that's in blue means they're exactly the same. Anything that are in green means they are similar but not exactly the same. Um, you'll see some light blues there. That means there's some differences in the amino acids. And the ones that are in black are there's, there's no consensus. They're either completely different or we may not know. Um, what what the particular amino acid there really is. But most of the time that means no consensus means they're completely different. So P and M, for example, are, are not even close to being the same. Okay, I'm going to hit a return here. Um, that's what I would do if I just want to compare two uh, sequences to each other. More typically, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to compare multiple sequences to each other. So we'll give it a second for it to get back to uh, my protein sequences page here. And again, we're waiting for Illinois. There we go. And again, scroll down. And what I want to do now is I want to click on all six of my sequences. And once again, I'm going to go up here and do a cluster. Some of the other tools I might want to use here, by the way, uh, I can click on a single protein and look at some of the amino acid statistics. That's often helpful. 
I can use the protein structure prediction tools or Pele to predict what the folding of this protein might be. So um, I encourage you, but keep in mind that if you want to do something to a protein or multiple proteins, you got to click on the checkbox first. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So I encourage you, I'm not going to demo all of these tools here. I encourage you to play with them. Okay, so here we got our, our complete alignment. And you can look at this and try to figure out how these organisms all compare. Looks like there is a lot of consensus here in the ones that are the same versus the ones that are not the same. So typically what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to import the alignment. And again, we'll wait for Illinois to import our alignment. Again, while we're waiting there, we'll take a look at my alignment there, and you can see where it started lining it up here on the uh, all with the methionine. Looks like the cow didn't have that little short chunk of sequence at the beginning, so it started lining it up at the first place that it could. And we're still waiting for Illinois. I apologize for the wait. Again, it, this current session is being run at 9 o'clock in the, in the morning on a Friday. I would imagine the servers out in Illinois are pretty busy this time of day. There we go. Now, notice because I've been imported alignment, it automatically put me into the alignment tools box, okay? And if I, I can either click to go down to alignments and import it, or I can go down. Notice now you have one alignment. There's only one checkbox there, but that alignment has six proteins in it. So I want to do something to that. Typically what I want to do is I want to create what's called a phylogenetic tree. So a phylogenetic tree is a map of the evolution or changes in these proteins over all of evolutionary time. There's two variants. There's an unrooted tree and a rooted tree. Uh, they both um, do functionally the same thing, they just look differently. I tend to like rooted trees, so I'm going to go ahead and click on my alignment there and click on draw a gram. And again, we will wait for Illinois to draw us a tree here. You can also, while we're waiting, you could come up here and color code a sequence alignment and that's doing using a tool called Bakshay. And that's sort of a nice tool, especially if you're going to publish the results of your, um, your alignment. It gives you a very pretty graphic that has nice color codes on it to make things just a little bit easier to see. Uh, you can also look for the sequence distance matrix. That's a, uh, just a data table or a matrix of evolutionary distances. Uh, between your organisms. And again, if you're going to do a distance matrix, you have to click on your alignment to, to be able to do that. You can also delete alignments. You can edit it. You could go and edit and take some things out and redo it. And you could view the alignment. Lots of things that you can do here. And again, what you want to do is, is play with these things. And that, my friends, is what's called a stall while I'm waiting for Illinois to draw my tree. What I would be doing now if it was taking this long is I would go find something else to do and come back later and look at my tree. It's usually not this slow. But you are accessing some pretty complicated databases and there's an awful lot of mathematics that goes into drawing this tree so you can't expect these things to pop up instantaneously. They're going to take as much time as they take. This is all pretty computationally intensive work being done here. And again, this is all being run on one of the supercomputers out at NCSA, National Center for Supercomputing Applications. So you can do some of this work on your own machine, on a laptop, uh, whatever the case may be, but in this case we're taking advantage of some uh, high-performance computing capabilities 
again, located out in, in Illinois. By the way, this is the student version of the biology workbench. There's also a professional level of the biology workbench, and that's located at the San Diego Supercomputing Center. The nice thing is, there we go, if you log in, if you have an account on the student version in Illinois, you automatically have an account on the professional version out in San Diego, and any of the studies that you do will uh, automatically be transferred from Illinois to San Diego. So your all your research work is on San Diego as well. All right, so we're getting there. It looks like it's still trying to run here a little bit, waiting for it to, to draw our tree. Our tree is going to appear in this uh, phenogram box down here at the bottom. So we're still waiting, waiting for that. You see some diagnostics down here. Um, Notice that all six of my sequences for UCP1 all have the same number of amino acids. So that gives me a warm fuzzy that I'm comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Okay, here's our, our phenogram finally. All right, reading from left to right, this little uh, nub here, this little line here represents the, a common ancestor or the beginning of evolutionary time. Okay, so this is way back millions of years ago. And what I see here is at the beginning of evolution, there were three branches that evolved for this particular protein. Humans evolved on their own branch, so there's UCP1 for human. And the second branch was cows and, and dogs. They evolved on their own branch separately from humans. And rat, rats, mice, and rabbits evolved on their own evolutionary branch uh, as well. Going down here, uh, the cow and the dog um, evolved together at some period in evolutionary time, but then they split off and the, the cows evolved first for this particular protein and dogs evolved sometimes later. So again, going from left to right, we're looking at evolutionary time. Up here, you see rabbits broke off and evolved uh, on their own particular path, whereas uh, rat and, and mice evolved at the same time. It looks like those lines are about the same same length here. So again, we're looking from left to right. Left to right. This is a, a phylogenetic tree. It's rooted. Rooted means it starts here on the left with a common ancestor. And what I would do with this particular uh, model, if I were saying um, I need a um, I need a, a a good animal model here, there's not a really particularly good choice for the human since this one evolved, uh, since humans evolved on its own branch here. Um, but I might pick, for example, mouse or rat. It looks like they are, they've evolved about the same time uh, as, as the humans. Okay, I hope this helps and good luck with using Biology Workbench.